what were some things that you took away from what he took out of the program or what he put in with those uh, athletes compared to early days where he was working with yet yeah, more yet yeah, healthy athletes? I flew to the States. I drove from Florida, myself and another coach, Mike Wafalaka, we drove from Florida through Louisiana, through Texas, I don't know, wherever we went. And we saw six coaches, six world-class coaches who had coached medalists and, and, and NCAA champions, etc. And the common denominator across the board was that their microcycles, be it a six day build up with a high low, be it a five day with a, with a day off in the middle of the week, um, and just having two high sessions, um, a, a program that was more towards, let's say aerobic, anaerobic conditioning, decent volume, pushing the limits of the physiological system, especially just from a, um, anaerobic ability to regenerate. So there's one side, you had other people who had gone more of a speed power route. How much from a percentage point of view, do you bother on the basics of teaching them optimal shapes to project and you know, react and switch and then to add to a point, do you then start to focus on, okay, let's make this specific to your sport and perhaps getting as low as a, as a hundred meter sprinter might not be as relevant. Once they've understand the basics fundamentals, do you then to, do you get them more upright in their acceleration in shapes at an angles that they're going to hit in their sport, if that makes sense? Yeah, it makes sense. And, and maybe there's some layers to it. So maybe the first layer to be clear about is, especially this past three years, we've had different AI systems at the moment. View motion is, is definitely the best AI system out there in the world for video analysis. And so we, we have a really cool partnership with Motion. It's, it's coming up to a year now. Maybe, maybe it's exactly a year now that we're in October. And, but even prior to that, we've been collecting quite a lot of field-based analysis of teams, team players, rugby, football at, at the most over the past year, AFL, rugby league, um, and NBA and, and, and NFL. Now I'm sure you've seen great players who may not fit technical model on the field, but they probably run fast. They're just not efficient. They are effective, but not very efficient, but at least they're effective. So that's the first place to start that performance on the field has to be our movement screen. And everyone believes that, but when they come down to doing it, they don't know what to see. There's so much controversy. Sprint training is being made very mythical. Sprint training is being made very academic. The fast university guys over in the States are condemning how academic it's been made. Obviously I love science. I collect science. We do research, we collect data, but the whole thing about our process and speed solutions as an app, for example, is that you can create analysis using view motion. We can have all of that data, 50, 60, a hundred pieces of data for one run. We can throw it into our system, let, let the algorithm do its thing. And it can give you a few priorities to work on. What's a way that you engage those star players that are performing really high level? They haven't had injuries to that point of their career yet. So it's not a problem, but like you said, you want to um, work on it now before it is a problem uh, and before it's a bigger problem. Uh, how do you find to get buy-in from that particular athlete or to engage them? The buy-in question always comes up. And yeah. I, it's a challenge for me sometimes because buy-in isn't really a thing. For me, a while ago, I talked to Ben Rosenblatt about, I don't know what was talking on, was talking crap about something, but he said, no, I don't want buy-in. I want people to buy in. I'm not trying to sell. I want people to go on a journey. I want people to understand. So I, I guess if from that, I'm saying buying is more like education. I never have to create buy-in. I show people, look, this is how you move. Great. You're a world-class performer. Great. I'm not trying to change you. I'm trying to evolve you. I ask lots of questions. I'm always asking people how they feel in team sports especially contact sport, often how you feel is the last question you've been asked. Maybe you've never been asked that question, how you feel about a movement. So sometimes it can be strange and confusing for people, but I give them lots of, uh, James Wilde talks about old and new, right? Good and bad contrast. I'm always providing contrast. In fact, half the time I encourage someone to do a drill and if they're going to do it poorly, I let them do it twice poorly. I let them feel it. Then I give them some very small cues, analogies, some feelings, some goal. Yeah, I create an environment for them to explore a new, new movement pattern and I ask them how it feels. And they're like, oh, actually, my old way isn't actually 
the best way because you've shown me this new way, but it's completely contrasted to what I've been taught. You're telling me the complete opposite thing to what I would normally do, but I've tried it and it feels good.